So in light of the news that Entergos basically no longer exists, it was one of my favorite distributions. It was basically an Arch Linux based distro that gave you an easy to use installer, but also some additional tweaks and repositories on top of that. So definitely sad to see that go. And that caused me to take another look at the alternatives. Now Manjaro is not new. It's existed for a very long time, longer than Enteragos did. And it has a feature called the Manjaro Architect I've been meaning to check out. I just haven't gotten around to it. And I figured in light of Enteragos going away, I wanted to basically give it a shot and make a video about it because I think it's a great feature of Manjaro and something that I think is relatively overlooked. All right, so here we are on my System76 Lemur laptop. Tried and true, it's old, but it works very well. And what I'm going to do is bring up the Manjaro Architect. Now we see the icon here on the left. Now depending on what, which spin of Manjaro you start with, it doesn't have to be the GNOME edition, the icon might be in a different place. In fact, there actually is a dedicated ISO image that's just the Manjaro Architect. So you don't even have to choose a desktop environment. And since you could choose whatever desktop environment you want, you don't, won't even end up with whatever one you have booted from. So in this case, I'm on the GNOME edition, but we can install whatever I want. But I'll go ahead and click on this icon right here. And I've already connected to Wi-Fi, but you know, that's important. It looks like we do see a failure here, but that's not from me. That's actually uh, probably a mirror that is down. Go ahead and make this larger so that we can see it better. Go ahead and let this update. So here we are at the main screen of the Manjaro Architect installer. I'm going to select the default of English, in my case, by simply pressing Enter. So at this screen, it's basically just giving you some information about the general usage of this installer. You use the up and down arrow keys to make your selection, Enter to confirm, and like it says, you can switch between buttons by pressing tab or the left and right arrow keys. So pretty general there. Um, if you've used any NCurses installers in the past, you pretty much know what to expect here. So I'll press enter. And at this screen, we basically have a list of steps that we need to complete. So the first thing we need to do is prepare the installation. Now, it probably goes without saying, but I'll mention it just in case. I am going to wipe out my hard drive completely, so only follow along with me if that's exactly what you want to do. Make sure you've backed up your important files because we will be basically wiping out everything. So I'll press enter for prepare installation. So for the first option, I'll set the virtual console and I'll just basically keep it as US in my case. You could change that by selecting that option if you need to do that, but I'll press enter. The second step is optional. We can list devices, so I'll press center. Let's see what that does. And as you can see here, it's basically showing you the disk layout that I have on my laptop right now. I have a Samsung SSD, and then the disk SDB is actually the USB flash drive that I booted from in order to boot this release. So I'll go back. And now for the third option, we will partition the disk. I'll press enter. And then you select which disk you want to work with. The only option for me is SDA because like I mentioned, SDB is my flash drive. So I'll select SDA. Now to keep things simple, I'm going to choose automatic partitioning. If you wanna do something more advanced, then you can simply select any of the other options here. I'm not gonna go over that. To keep it simple for this tutorial, I'm just gonna use automatic partitioning, but feel free to experiment with any of the other options if you'd like. And it gives me a warning, like I mentioned, I am going to be wiping out everything on this disk. And that's exactly what I wanna do. I wanna have Manjaro as my only distribution. And it also tells me 512 megabyte boot partition will also be created. And it's going to create a root or slash partition, that's the root file system. And that's fine, so I'll press enter on the default of yes to confirm that. And it's given me an overview. So there's going to be one main partition of around 465 gigabytes for the distribution and my data. 
as well as the 512 megabyte boot partition that I mentioned. So that's good. So I'll go back. Now optionally, we can set up Lux encryption. That will give us encryption at rest, which is very important if we have confidential information that we plan to save on the disk. It would be a shame if my laptop got stolen, but if I encrypted it, then I would have a layer of protection there to help ensure that no one can get my confidential data, so long as I didn't use a very weak password for that. But I'm gonna go ahead and skip past that. LVM, or Logical Volume Management, that's optional. I did do a few videos on LVM recently if you're at all curious what the benefits might be. ZFS, also optional, I'm gonna skip that. And I'm gonna go here to option number seven, which is mount partitions, and I'll press enter. So I'll press enter again here. And it just wants us to select the root partition, which is going to be the larger one, in my case, 465 gigabytes. So I'll press enter. And then it's asking me which file system do I wanna use? If you don't have a preference, go ahead and go with ext4. If you have uh, some other features you'd like to take advantage of, feel free to try the other options. But for 99% of you, ext4 is gonna be just fine. So I'll select that and press enter. And again, it's letting me know that data is going to be lost. Well, that was already the case because it did just create a partition table. So um, we're already past that part. So I'll just confirm that. Now here we have some additional options that we can use. And for the most part, you can leave these as default. But if you have an SSD like I do, you probably want to enable discard. And what I did is I just used the down arrow to select that. And then I pressed the space bar to uh, confirm that selection. So that's fine. Other than that, I think I am good. I'm just going to press enter to confirm the selections here and I'll move on to the next screen. And I'll press enter again. Mount successful. Now it wants me to choose the swap partition. What I'm going to choose is swap file. I recommend swap files nowadays because we've always used swap partitions in the past, but if you needed to resize your swap partition, you would have to resize your partition table, which is risky. A swap file is somewhat risky because if it's not present, you might have you know some issues if the FS tab file is expecting that but you don't have to resize your partition, so it is safer, and that is the option that I recommend that you go with, and if you chose the automatic partitioning as I did, then um, you, know, you, you don't even have a swap partition, so I'll choose swap file, and it wants me to select a size. This is around 16 gigs. I think that's going to be way too much for me, so what I'm gonna do is set it to 4G, so four gigabytes. I think that'll be fine, and I'll press enter, and it's given me an option to select any additional partitions. I don't have any. The selection is undone, so I'll press enter. Now it's asking me for the UEFI partition. So I'll press enter for SDA1. And then I'll select yes here. And then I'll keep the default selection of slash boot slash EFI and press enter again. Mount successful. Now we can configure the installer mirror list. That's option number eight, so I'll press enter. And then I'm going to go down here to rank mirrors by speed and press enter. I want to make sure that I'm on the stable release that is the default. Testing is not what we're installing here. So I'll press enter and enter again. Give this a minute to finish testing. So here we are. We have the Manjaro mirrors by response time. So what I'm gonna do is just select the first three here and then click OK and OK again. And then I'll press enter to go back. So I'll go ahead and refresh the Pac-Man keys, which is a good idea, press enter. So option number 10, I will choose the Pac-Man cache. I'll press enter here. And this just basically gives us an option to use a Pac-Man cache from the installation media here. I'll just select the default of yes. It probably doesn't matter either way, but this could potentially save you some time. And option 11, enable the file system checker hook. I'll press enter for that. 
And then, yes, I do want to use that, and I'll press Enter. And now I'll press Enter to go back. And then option number two is install desktop system. We could also do a CLI system as well. So I'm going to go with number two, install desktop system, and press Enter. First option for Manjaro desktop, Enter. So we have several options here. So first of all, I'm going to check the first one to use yay plus base devil. Base devil is a bunch of development packages that I personally always end up needing, so I may as well install that. Yay is a wrapper for Pac-Man that just makes it a little bit easier to install packages from the Arch user repository. So I prefer that. And then next we need to check and install a kernel. I'm going to use Linux 5.1. You can go to kernel.org to get a listing of what is considered a supported kernel because that's always going to change pretty much every month. But as of the time I'm recording this, Linux 5.1 is the latest stable kernel, so that's the one that I'm going to go with. And I'll press Enter. And now what I get to do is choose GNOME, KDE, XFCE, or any of the other options right here. So I am going to go ahead and check the GNOME option and press Enter. And it's asking me if I would like to add any additional packages to the installation. I'm going to say no and press Enter. And we can choose a full or minimal version. I want the minimal one because I don't want to have too many packages that I didn't really ask for. I don't really like the bloat of the standard release. So I'm going to choose option number two for minimal and press enter. And here we go. I'm going to go ahead and let this install. So here on this screen, we have to make a selection between free or proprietary drivers. Generally speaking, free drivers should be fine, but if you have a proprietary video card, for example, NVIDIA, you probably want to use the proprietary option. But in my case, I'm just going to use the free drivers because I know that my laptop only has an Intel card and that's supported by the free drivers. So I'll just leave the default selection and press Enter. All right, so I'll press Enter to continue just like it says. And we do need to install a bootloader, so I'll press Enter. And we have three options, Grub and so on, but I'm going to use Grub as mine. A lot of people like Systemd boot, but if you're using something like TimeShift, it's not going to work with that. I find that Grub is the most compatible. There are compelling reasons to not use Grub and use Systemd boot instead. But like I said, I'm just going to keep the default as Grub because I find that it works in pretty much all use cases where it matters to me. So I'll press Enter and Enter again. So here I am going to use the default of Yes to just make sure that the uh, appropriate file is copied for me. This may not apply to everyone, but if you see this, it makes sense to just choose the default. So I'll press Enter. And option number three, we're going to configure the base. So I'll press Enter for that. We're going to generate the FS tab file. Enter. I'm going to use UUIDs. The first option is going to be fine. So I'll press Enter. And then we can set the host name. That's option number two. That just gives you a chance to name your machine. So I'll press Enter. And I'm just going to leave mine as Manjaro because this is just a demo. If I was actually going to use this as my day-to-day -day driver, which I might actually end up doing, um, I would actually give it a name that would identify this particular machine on the network. But I'll leave it as default and press Enter. Feel free to change that if you'd like. Set system locale. We do need to do that. Enter for that. And it is set to ENUS UTF-8. Well, at least that's the default selection here. And that is correct in my case. If yours is different, select a different option. But in the United States, that is the appropriate option. I'll press Enter. So for the keyboard layout, let's set that. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. And here, close to the bottom, US is listed. I'll press Enter. Time zone, Enter again. I'm going to choose America. And then in my case, I'm going to scroll down to Detroit because that's the closest city from me on this list. Enter. And then I'll confirm by pressing Enter again. I'll choose UTC, that's a good option. Now if you're dual booting with Windows, you might want to choose a different option for that, but that's not what I'm doing. So I'll press Enter. Now I'll set the root password, and I'll type that in here. And again, 
Mine's super simple. Again, this is just a demo, so I don't really care much about security, but I'll press enter. Add a new user. We should do that. We should add at least one user. And I'll just type in my desired username. I'll just use my first name there. And then I like the Bash shell personally, but you know, you could leave it as ZSH if that's what you'd like. So I'll press enter for that. And I'll type in my password again. And then I'll press enter to go back. So let's check out system tweaks, which is option number four. I could enable automatic login if I'd like. I'm not going to do that. I prefer to type in the password. If you plan on using hibernation, you could also do that. Let's see what's underneath performance though, option number three in the submenu. And here we could change IO schedulers, swap configuration, and preload. I'm not going to choose any of those options, but if you'd like, feel free to look into those options, especially preload, which can help, and then see if any of those apply to you. But I'm gonna go ahead and go back. I'm not going to enable hibernation, and we also have security and system detweak, so I'll press enter. Let's see what's in there. Nothing that interests us for the purposes of this video, but if you wanna look at some advanced options, you could possibly enable those. I'll go back. I can review configuration files. I can also chroot into the installation, but I'm not gonna do any of that. I'm just gonna use option seven and go back. And then I'm gonna go down here to done and press enter. And then I will press enter to close the installer. And then yes, I will save the installation log to the installed system and then I'll press enter. Moment of truth, is it going to work? I'm gonna go ahead and reboot this laptop and we're gonna see if the installation was successful. So in the case of the GNOME edition, reboot is up here. I'll just go ahead and click on that icon and then restart. And then I'll make sure to remove my flash drive when I get to that point. I should be okay to do so right now. Make sure it boots into the actual installed system. All right, so here we are on the installed system. I have the Manjaro welcome screen here and we are ready to go. Now, unfortunately, even though I chose the minimal installation for GNOME, I basically ended up with a GNOME installation with a lot of things that I didn't ask for. So um, that's unfortunate that the minimal option still gives us additional things. Uh, for example, if I go to internet, you can see I have Skype online, I didn't ask for that or um, pretty much any of the things that are installed here. Now you can use Manjaro Architect to build a custom system by simply installing the CLI option instead of an actual desktop. And that would allow you to manually piece together your installation. So you do get some unfortunate side effects here. Like for a lot of people, maybe the panel is fine. Maybe the uh, menu up here is fine and all these extra add-ons. But for me, I prefer more of a vanilla plain installation. But again, you can achieve that by simply installing the CLI version and then piecing together the packages. For example, installing your desktop environment and um, installing, installing Xorg and so on. And then you would be able to accomplish that. But I did want to give you guys a walkthrough of the Manjaro Architect and I have achieved that and here we have a fully installed Manjaro system and we went through the custom architect method through which to get that done. Go ahead and check out the Manjaro Architect. I think it's a great way of installing Manjaro. It gives you additional options that you otherwise wouldn't have had and it gives you additional customization over your overall installation. So I think that is definitely something to check out. Let me know your thoughts in the uh, comments section below. I look forward to checking that out. So there you go. I hope that was helpful for you guys. Stay tuned. I have new content coming very soon. I can't wait to show you and I will see you in my next upload. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.